help me welcome our father in the house, Bishop David Oedipo. If you have been blessed by that um, fatherly insight that we just received, and Jesus has touched you like he has touched me, lift up your two hands and give God thanks for the world. Give God thanks for the world. Until you thank him for the last, you are not entitled to the next. Give him thanks. For the word of wisdom that has come, give him thanks for the insight that has come. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this platform today of assessing help from above to make the most of your call upon everyone's life. Now, receive our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that each one leaves here with something to work with. Amen. That every session here, including the question time, will be time of deepened insight. Amen. Enlargement and advancement for every ministry. Amen. Growth and explosion for every church. Amen. A mighty revival breaking forth in every assembly. Amen. Let this be the portion of each one of us. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand and please let me see. Let me first give God thanks for the privilege to be part of this conference today and for the honor of being asked to say anything. When I was told about the vision for this gathering, my heart jumped at it. Quite a number of people can, by self-discipline, find what they need. Others need to be helped to find it. Whichever way, whether you find it by yourself or you are helped to find it, just find it. And I think that is what is in the heart of our Father for calling this conference. Let's give the Lord a big hand for this platform. Amen. But almost everything I wanted to say, he said. So I just want to start from somewhere. I heard him say, Jesus will only build his church not your church. I was coming to come and share on that, but he has said it. So we can as well pray and I go and take my seat and hear the next thing. It has never come from my mouth, out of my mouth in my life, my church. Not once, not in utterance, not in practice, not in behavior. Jesus will only build his church and is building against the wishes of the gates of hell, which you can see, so you can fight it. Allow the owner to own it. No one has the capacity to own a church. He bought it with his own blood, with his own blood. Young man, he bought it with his own blood. Your blood and my blood can't buy any church because his own is stainless blood. Stainless blood. Never knew sin. We were all forgiven. So no one has capacity to own a church. If I shed all the blood in my body, he can't buy it. It requires the stainless blood of the Lamb to purchase the church. His own church, which he purchased with his own blood, 
Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Let's allow the owner to own it, and then we have committed him to continue to build it. The church in your care shall never suffer a setback anymore. Yeah. A number of our friends around the world, my church, my church, my church, we've seen that over the years, and nothing is moving. God is not a joker. He says what he means, and it means everything he says. I will build my church. I believe all of the churches that we are assigned to by God will never suffer a breakdown anymore. Yeah. When you get to a construction site, you don't ask about the foreman, you ask about the contractor. The credit of the job goes to the contractor, not the foreman. The contractor is the one building. You're only representing him on site. His instruction is what to find on site, not your instruction. So even those of us who are general overseers and leaders of ministry, president and founders, at best we are forming. The one actually building is Jesus. And so the glory must go to him. I want to also note that um, there is no specialist in church growth. No matter what you and I may put in, like we are told, it is God that gives the increase. We must plant, we must water, and then look up to God, to Jesus, the master builder, to give the increase. I'll be sharing briefly on what I've called gateways to supernatural church growth. Gateways to supernatural church growth. Every result in the kingdom begins with a vision. Without vision, the people perish. But he that keeps to the law of vision, happy is he. Everything that secures results in the kingdom begins with a vision. No one ever arrives at a future that he cannot see. As far as your eyes can see unto you, will I give it? Genesis 13, numbers 14 and 15. So it has to begin with a vision. What is the vision of the Lord concerning his church? It shall come to pass in the last days. That's God's agenda. Explosive church growth is God's agenda for the last days church. The, letter, the last days began on the day of Pentecost when Peter said, this is that which was spoken by Prophet Joel, that in the last days. So we are right in the middle, I don't know, or at the tail of the last days. And God's agenda from Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 is that in the last days shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. So the end time church is ordained an ever-growing church. It's repeated verbatim in Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2. So it's not for a particular denomination, a particular ministry. It's God's agenda for the end time church because he does not want any man to be lost. He wants all men saved to come to knowledge of the truth, which is available in church. The church is the city of illumination. 
when I entered the sanctuary of the Lord, then understood I. So it is the will of God to have all men saved and have them drafted into church so they can be fed on the truth and live a triumphant life and make heaven at the end of the journey. So, you know, the vision of all is as a book that's written. The vision of all. So everyone's vision has its root in scriptures. We need to understand that the end time church is ordained an explosive growing church. Then we can plug into it from there. We haven't seen anything yet. Churches, like nations, will be rising in their numbers. Churches that will humble the kings of the earth will be rising in their numbers. And I know many of such explosive great churches are represented here today. It doesn't matter where you are. He said, from the place we are, thou art. Look forward. Look northward. Look southward. For all the land we thou seest, unto you will I give it. To thy seed after thee. There's a great future for that church. You will not dash it. There's a great, great future for the church of Christ on the earth today. You know what they said? Sit down at my right hand. To let me the enemies are fools too. Jesus, by the time he returns, the church will be reigning in power, having the last say on every issue of life. He said, All my springs are in thee, O Zion. Psalm 87. This man was born there, that man was born there. The Almighty Himself shall establish her. That's the end time church. A church that is reigning in power. So vision is what gives you your place in the end time church. You must be able to catch a vision of an ever growing church to experience one. We must be able to catch the vision of an ever growing church to see one built by God where he has assigned us. Remember, without vision, the people perish. But he that keeps to the vision of the Lord as unveiled to him, happy is he. May growth not become history in your ministry. May we receive grace from this conference today to take responsibility to keep that church growing by playing our own part. Yeah. It's not enough to see it. Every vision delivers by faith. The next key to spiritual church, church growth is faith. Without me, ye can do nothing. You have seen the vision, but you can't make it happen. David said, or Solomon said in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 15 and 24, he said, the thing which the Lord has spoken to my father David has with his hand fulfilled it. What he has promised to my father David, he has fulfilled it with his hands. First Kings chapter 8, verse 15 and 24. And faith is the only way to bring the hand of God to bear on any man or any task who had believed our report unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. So it takes faith to see the vision for church growth realized. It takes faith. Because the hand of God that builds and builds to last is provoked by faith. 
who had believed our report, Isaiah 53 verse 1, and unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. Number two, we are also told that in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, a great vision of seven golden candlesticks with bows on it, all of gold. He said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not possible by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. And faith is our access to tapping into virtue. We saw that in the story of the woman with the jaw of blood. Who touched me? I said, we're all strong in you. He said, no, someone touched me because virtue is gone out of me. So it's by faith we tap into power virtue that makes the impossible happen. It's by faith we tap into virtue that makes the impossible happen. And as soon as the virtue went into her body, her sorrow ended. The plague ended. The affliction ended. Her story changed. So it takes faith to tap into the spirit of life that makes the impossible happen. That makes the impossible happen. Someone is overseeing the church here today. You can make double that size happen before the year is over. Amen. By just being able to understand how to make it happen. By the grace of God, I have never been over any church that does not grow. No. At least I've served by the grace of God in three different locations. So it's not about where you are, it's about where you stand. It's not about what you know, it's about what you do with what you know. So he said, Be ye not hearers of the word, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self. For whosoever hears the word and does not do it like a man that looks at himself in the mirror and walks away and straightway forgets what, he, what man of man he looks like. Whosoever has access to the truth and continues therein, that man shall be blessed in all his deed. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. Information does not change, does not transform people. It's information, utilization that does. You put to work the information you have, or your story never changes. My prayer again is that something unusual will live here with us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, getting straight to some vital keys we are still on that makes church growth happen. In Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 7 and 8, before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who has had such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or a nation born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. Every growing church is a praying church. And every praying church will end up becoming a growing church. Just like you don't give birth to a child without going through the labor room. The labor room of prayer is the birthplace of church growth. How is that so? This Innocent people have been captured by the God of this world, the strong man who won't let go. For when a strong man arm keeps his palace, his goods at peace. But when the stronger than him shall come upon him, Luke 11, 21 and 22, and overcome him, he will take away the armor in which he trusts and will release his captives. That's what we do in prayers. We are praying for this 
wicked captor to lose his grip of the lives of those who are ordained unto eternal life in our various territories. You never find a growing church on this earth that is not a praying church. Particularly a healthy growing church, not a jamboree. A church where individuals line up with Jesus and are connected to doing his will with delight. You never find one except as birthed by a praying people. I will yet be inquired of this, he said, Ezekiel 36 and verse 37 of the house of Israel to do it for them, and I will feed them with men like flock. We have to get down to pray to see church grow. Churches will only grow in response to our intercession, breaking off the hands of the wicked over the lives of people that are ordained for eternal life. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 48, it says, as many as were ordained for eternal life believed. Many of us were ordained for eternal life, believed. And that's what we are doing. Prayer is a non negotiable requirement for anyone that desires to experience supernatural church growth in the assignment that God has given him. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, no one here shall be left behind. Amen. No one here shall be left behind. Amen. No one here shall be left behind. Paul said, my children, with whom I traveled in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Galatians 4, verse 19. He traveled to birth them. He traveled to see them established. Prayer is the life wire of every growing church. Prayer is the life wire of every growing church. Ask of me, and I will give you the heathen for thy inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. The book of Psalms, chapter 2, and verse 8. A praying church is a growing church. The problem in most cases is not about people not praying, but people not knowing what to pray. People not knowing what to pray. Supernatural church growth is all, all about heavenly forces walking and growing that church. One day I stood in church and I said, how many of you in this church were not invited by anybody? An army of people, including our pastors. Somebody testified he was just on the road and he saw cars going. And he didn't ask where they are going, he just drove after them. And by the time he got there, he said, that was the vision he saw last night. The exact building was the vision he saw last night. He said to there forever. Among the forces behind church growth is the Lord of the harvest himself, the Holy Ghost. And he responds only to prayer. How much more will God give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Luke eleven thirteen. What does he do? He's the one that convicts of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Is the one that pricks the heart of man to the point of repentance and conversion. Holy Ghost, blow across our harvest field with waves of convictions and conversions. What does it do? It's the wind. It came down as a mighty rushing wind and got 3,000 across the town into the upper room. 
Just like Numbers chapter 11, verse 31, there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought in quays from the sea and made them fall around the camp, two cubits high, round about the camp. That's the Holy Ghost in the figure. Holy Spirit, blow across the harvest field of this church and blow in multitudes the kind we have never seen, the kind that no human hand can bring. You are now praying. Now, we are also told that the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Matthew chapter 13, verse 39. And Jesus said, don't you think I can now pray my father and he'll give me more than 12 legions of angels? In the name of Jesus, reaper angels, come down across our harvest field and draft in the undraftables. Wait on all that are ordained for eternal life and bring them on your wings into church. And he does that. And when they come to his house, he works salvation on them and they become saved. The problem is not just not praying, but not knowing what to pray. Not like we are told, oh God, come and build this church. Now, oh boy, do your job. Do your part. God will not answer an unprayed prayer. Pray it. Pray it. We've seen amazing people that there is no way they could explain that they go there, but they, they go there anyway. Don't say nobody brought me. Our prayers brought you. The prayers of the saints, the old and the young, brought you. We have about eight prayer manuals in our church in the hand of everybody with everyone taking the responsibility to pray an hour a day. That's how we have wrong. So, just two Sundays ago, we had about 160,000 people over the previous Sunday by the hand of God. <laughs> by the hand of God. Everybody came by himself by the hand of God. Please know what to pray and pray what you must pray. And pray what you must pray. In addition, prayer and fasting empowers the growth of the church because some barriers against the church will not give way except by prayer and fasting. Why could we not cast this barrier demon out? He said, this kind went not out but by prayer and by fasting. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20 and 21, verse 19 to 21, 21 in particular. This kind went not but by prayer and fasting. There's a fasting price that is paid for any church to keep experiencing unstoppable growth. Because these forces go and at times they come back. The moment to become empty, they come back. But to secure the hand of God. Now, build a resistance against a reinvasion on a consistent basis. I'm always bothered about his fasting and experience, I used to experience that. But there is no other way. There's no other way. There is no other way to keep the barriers off your path of progress, there is no other way. Lots of fasting has gone into this place, and principally through him. Lots of fastings have gone in. One day I was sharing this humor. I waited on the law for virtually a year at a particular time. And when it was time 
to minister in the church, I felt like coughing, so I dashed into the washroom. The only thing that came out was blood. So I say humorously, it is the blood of Jesus and my own poor blood that built the church. I mean, I was like a rope. Maybe I went too far. Now, till tomorrow, every week, there's a day of fasting in our church. Christmas, New Year, it doesn't matter. Everybody waits on the Lord one day a week and three days every month. The only way to keep the enemy off your territory because I will build my church the gates of it will want to resist the growth and when you grow it they want to scatter the growth so what do you do build a heavy resistance against the powers of darkness and you keep experiencing the hand of God over that church can I hear your amen, amen. never forget God's agenda for the end time church is explosive growth. We are churches, we become like nations. We are the influence and the impact of the church we compare with nations. Your place will not be lost there. Yeah. We saw the effect of prayer in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 20 to 23. Many strong nations shall come to seek the Lord and to pray before the Lord, and they will say, I will go also. Yea, ten men will hold to the skirt of it as a Jew and say, We will go with you. I mean, God will be decorating his people as they stand before him in prayers. They will be turned to attraction entities that sinners will be following them. We must go with you. Let's get home and turn these churches to praying churches so we can start experiencing real growth. Genuine growth, sustainable growth. We only resort by committing ourselves to a life of prayer, praying what we must pray to make things happen. At a point, the church was taught in Acts chapter 6. And the apostle said, wait a minute. It is no reason for us to lead the word of God and serve table. We give ourselves continually to prayers and to the ministry of the word. And so the word of the Lord increased. So we pray the word. What are we praying? We are praying the word because we are ever the carcasses. They are the eagles shall be gathered together. We pray for the continuous flow of the word. We pray for continuous insight and continuous utterance. And so... The word of God increased and number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And many of the priests, the antagonists, became obedient to the faith. Thank you, Jesus. I had an experience, very humbling one. Uh, a Catholic priest said he saw in a vision. The Lord said, go to him, he will be your mentor. And it's been on like that since 2001. He teaches what I teach in the Catholic Church. Amen. Amazing things. You just find attractions coming from everywhere. That will be your experience. Yeah. The good thing is that this prayer is everybody's ministry. It's not just somebody, some people are in the prayer squad. No. After this manner, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. First Timothy 2 4, he wants all men say, come to know the truth, that's his will. Second Peter 3 9, he does not want anyone to perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we are praying 
kingdom advancement prayers, we call it. Praying for souls to be saved, we call it. And give us their deliberate. So anybody who could pray, give us their deliberate, must pray. Thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth. It is done in heaven. And not once a while, give us to their daily bread, makes those prayer items, or what I call kingdom prayer protocol, a daily issue. That's something you do because you are doing outreach. It's a daily issue. It's God's daily protocol for prayers. There is no principle under heaven that will qualify any church for growth without prayers. There is no technique. There is no, uh, let's have singing, let's have drama. It won't be a substitute. Number four in our consideration of the time we have is passionate pursuit after souls. I selected my words carefully. Passionate, not religious, not they say we should go, so we are going. Passionate pursuit after souls for their salvation. You just won't let go. This man will be saved. Passionate pursuit after souls. I pray that comes on anybody's life today. We are empowered by the Holy Ghost principally to be effective witnesses of Jesus. Principally. It doesn't matter anybody's calling because people just over-celebrate vanities. Paul the Apostle said, by the helps of God, I continue unto this day witnessing to both great and small. Acts 26 verse 22. Paul, the foremost apostle of the New Testament, was witnessing to both great and small. Witnessing to both great and small. Witnessing to both great and small as a lifestyle. He was giving that testimony towards the end of his life. He told Timothy when he was winding up, Timothy, do the work on a, of an evangelist so as to make full proof of your ministry. For I'm ready to be poured out as a libation. I've finished my course. Henceforth, there's little for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord will give, not only to me, but to everyone that love is appearing, loves his return. And he won't return until this gospel is preached to all creatures. Amen. No calling excuses anybody from witnessing Jesus. And this is the good side of it. You'll never see a healthy, growing church that is not reaching out to the lost. You'll never see one. Go to the highways and the edges and compare them to come that my house may be filled. Luke 14, verse 23. He called his disciples and said, Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. So I believe, so not shall be down. And this I shall follow them that believe. Every disciple is ordained to be on the go. Hear what he said. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And I've ordained you, every believer, that you should go and bring forth fruits and that your fruit should remain. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Every new creature is called an ambassador of Jesus on a mission to reconciling the dying world back to God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. So it's everybody's business. It's everybody's calling. I want to admonish that to get out of here and hit the streets for Jesus. Start sharing with passion, undying passion. So we let someone to Christ in our outreach under the bridge. This man has been a drug addict for 22 years. 
His sons joined him in that business. He was a drug user and a drug businessman. Jesus touched him. He got saved. He brought to church last Sunday a list of 561 souls that he has led to Christ and asking that our outreach office will help to follow them up. Name and number. 561 souls. And then the pastor is sitting down there doing nothing. Is that right? Two weeks ago, my team and I were out. We returned with 2,308 souls. And on Sunday, 1,312 of them were in church. And they came with 548. So we had 1,860 souls that came through one week outreach. No stage, no choir, no nothing. Corner to corner, Jesus loves you. He sent me to you because he did. Go, he said. He said to who? To everybody. So I've come because he sent me to you. You are in a battle with the past of darkness, but Jesus is the light of the world. When you open the door of your heart to him, he lightens you and darkness leaves you alone. You want to be saved? Why not? You have suffered enough. Please get on the go. Get on the go. It's the only way to sustain your spiritual strength. You'll be gone in no time. If all you are doing is decorated teachings and, you know, teachings that and you applaud, it doesn't take you anywhere. It doesn't. Please, please get on the go. Get on the go. Get on the go. Now, if you are not doing everybody's ministry, you don't have a ministry. If you don't have a passion for souls, you are not a pastor. You are just a career teacher. You are just a career teacher. You are just a career teacher. Somebody came into our church years ago and was trying to take some offerings and I got a bit upset. So after the meeting, I called the people that he was trying to take an offering from. I said, I am your pastor. And I pointed to one of them humorously. I said, if they throw you up and land, you don't have that amount. So I release you from it. I release you from it. The Lord told me, don't raise money, raise men. And you have more money than you will ever need for ministry. We have never borrowed, we have never taken over that from any bank. We have never bought any equipment on higher purchase. Yet, God is doing what he's doing. Please wake up and understand the core of your ministry. You are not sent by the people, you are sent to the people. The one who sends you He's the one that holds responsibility for your upkeep and the enlightenment and expansion of the ministry, like we are told. You don't have to start gasping, you know, you know, we want to have a building, we want to have air conditioner. Yeah, that's not what you need. We had a grass cathedral in Kaduna town. Grass, grass. Total cost of construction was 23,000 plus. People were getting saved, don't die. The floor wasn't paved. You are dancing, the dust is dancing with you. It's your heart. And you stand with God at the time is what happens. Please, please, please. Let's look away from all the ephemeras and look up to the substance. You can't grow a church just having fun. You can't grow a church just having fun. Let's get on the job. Let's get on the job. God is a covenant-keeping God, not a Father Christmas God. Until your part is played, God can never be committed. The good news is God has ordained every church that he has called his servanthood for supernatural growth. All we need is awake and take responsibility. I pray that each one here will return with an undying passion for souls. Yeah. I was out two Saturdays ago, then we finished, came back home, and I got to my day, meet my wife, and I said, what's happening? 
I called, there was no answer. She was still ministering under the rain. Under the rain. Reaching out to the lost. There is nothing about status in this kingdom. You want anything to work? Go and work it. Go and work it. Nothing works without somebody at work. I pray you will get on the job. I pray you get on the job. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, number five of our concentration here is the word. It's a principal factor for growth. We all know that eagles don't feed on dead kills. Eagles feed on fresh kills. If you must gather eagles, if you must raise eagles out of those humble people you have gathered from the streets, from everywhere, then you have to come out fresh. You have to come out with fresh word, the word in season, the saint word, the right word. Not going to the platform guessing what to say. I know the Lord will speak to me when I get there. That's not true. The preparation of the heart and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So preparation is your responsibility. You shall hear a word from me and give them warning from me. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 17. So you settle down. Zechariah 3 verse 17. Settle down to hear from God. People won't hear you until you hear from God. Settle down to hear from God. Settle down to hear from God. Settle down to hear from God. He said, study to show yourself approved unto God. As a workman that will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study, if you don't, you don't want to end up stupid. Study, settle down. Settle down. Settle down. For wherever the carcass is, Matthew 24, verse 28, there the eagles shall be gathered together. The word of God increased, and the disciples multiplied greatly. In Jerusalem. He said, when goods increase, they increase that eat it. So increase in the world is a factor for continuous multiplication of disciples. And that comes by settling down to work it. Settle down to hear from heaven. It will be a word in season that will refresh the congregation. It will be the sent word that heals and delivers. It will be the right word that is forceful. Job 6.25, how forcible are right words. Isaiah 50 verse 4, a word in season that will bring you a refreshing. Brings the people a refreshing. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them out of all their disruptions. Let's stay focused. Let your Saturday be reserved for only spiritual things. You are, you are not a chief executive, you are a chief servant. You are to distribute the bread and the fish tomorrow morning. Where's the bread? Where are the fishes? You don't have them, they won't come back. They won't come back. They won't come back. They won't come back. There was a time in the ministry of Yonggi Cho. He went out during chilly winter while people were coming down with buses. And because everybody's in winter cold, they didn't know it was the one. Why do I have to come this far to this place? The world, the world, the world. Why do I have to come far to this place? The world, the world, the world. What was drafting them was the word. And when they stop, do you go to a restaurant that has closed down? Hello? 
Do you stand in front of the restaurant and say, close down? You say, no, this way I must eat. I like this food. No, you walk away. When you stop supplying the food, nobody will be there. Feed my lamb. They are there principally to feed. Now you don't have what to feed them all. They go somewhere else. They go somewhere. Feed my lamb. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. You don't have stuff to feed them with. They go away. They go away. So we have a job. To bake the bread. We have a job. To fry the fish. Put spices on it. You are not deceiving anybody. You are giving them the meat that they need for their strength to be sustained, for their healing to be delivered, for the deliverance to be established. You come with a heart panting to see God touch the people. You are not coming with a heart to look for offering. No, 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 no. Because all this kind of, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I have nothing to do with poverty in my life. But I've never looked at anybody and think of what I can get from him. Well, um, it's over to us. The Lord spoke to me very clearly. Don't raise money, raise men. Stop inviting people to kill the church to help you raise money. If they can trust you, don't let them. Don't let them. Somebody asked me many years ago, why don't they give offering in, the, in, in their church? I said, they can't trust you. They can't. They can't trust you. Don't let people come to church apprehensive. Well, we don't know what will happen again today. Do you have some money in your pocket? Because they're already apprehensive. That's, that's not life. That's not life. That's not life. Teach the world. Leave them to make their choice. Just teach the pure word of God that's not targeting their pockets or craving for their title. Just teach the word and go away. Teach the word and go away. To take off in our place and for the choir to sing at the same time is all 12 minutes. Offering, you speak two minutes. Give shall be given to you. Good measure, President. Stand up, please. Give your offering. Because this man is eager to hit the platform. Somebody's dying that needs to be rescued. And he wants to get him out. That is the way to move. My prayer again is that this conference will not be wasted in anyone's life. And in the name of Jesus, you will draw testimonies from here. I finished teaching this to some group of pastors and they got back home. One didn't get home. It was from the airport. He went on the street. He got 42 souls that day. He said, eh? There are so many. There are so many. Many, many multitudes are in the valley of decision. They are just waiting for someone to say, Jesus loves you, and then he drops. Jesus loves you, and then he drops. Well, I'm sure you'd like to know this, that I have two imams, converts, who are working for us now. It's an awesome God. The good news is, you have a testimony. You will have a testimony. Shall we give the Lord Jesus a big hand and stand on our feet? Shall we all lift up our two hands and receive grace? If anything has been added to us, let's receive grace to put it to work. If you got any extra light on the word that God has put in your hands, lift up your two hands and give God thanks. If you are grateful to God that he brought you to this platform today, to be re energized, give God thanks. Will you look up to Jesus, the expert builder? Look up to him. 
Jesus, I'm looking up to you for a new thing to begin. In this assignment you are put in my hands, I'm looking up to you for a new thing to begin. Look up to him. They looked to him and they were lightened in their face were not ashamed. Look up to Jesus. Look up to Jesus. I know I'm not an expert and there's no expert builder. You are the master builder. Look up to the Holy Ghost, the Lord of the harvest. Empower me afresh. For a passionate drive after souls. All the days of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. He said, don't be slothful, but follow us of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. No one got there by chance. Discipline, diligence, dedication, sacrifice, they are all non-negotiable factors that make unusual things happen. Don't be slothful. There is no future for a lazy man. Don't be slothful. If wishes were horses, all the beggars will ride. Strengthen every hand that is hanging down and your feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet. Stop listening to old wife fables. They planted cow. That's why church is growing. Cow is not costly. You can buy one or two or three if you are very greedy for growth. Those are all lazy people's comments. Go and walk. 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 You can't be sitting around a church that is 100 today, 100 tomorrow, 200 next tomorrow. I mean, and after 10 years, 100. Doing what? If you are not called, get out of it. But if you are called, bend down and walk. My prayer is that everybody will be sharing testimonies from the platform of this conference. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Give Jesus a big, big hand, please.